You know, Shakespeare said it best. Love is not love which alters when it alteration finds, or bends with a remover to remove. Oh no, it is an ever-fixed mark that looks on tempests and is never shaken. It is the star to every wandering bark, whose worth's unknown, although his height be taken. As St. Valentine's Day approaches this Friday, love is definitely in the air. And we're joined now by Bill Phelan and Jennifer Haskins, who set up twoscompany.com, one of Ireland's largest introduction services, following their own experiences of dating services as each searched for love the second time around. Uh, you're both very welcome to the programme. So, why did you decide to sign up to a dating agency? You first, Jennifer. Well, I suppose I had um, tried internet dating before that. And as we all know, that's not the easiest thing to do and is very time consuming. And, and what sort of creatures were you meeting on the internet? Oh, the w wild, weird and wonderful. And did you meet any of them in the flesh? Oh, I did. Yeah, yeah. I know. I, I have to say, it was it was a mixed, you know, mixed, a bag. mixed bag. But in the main, I hadn't the time because I was running a business, and you have to spend so many hours trawling through all these profiles to find something. Okay, so you made. wanted a filter, and the dating exactly. agency was to be the filter. Yeah. Okay. Now, Bill, what about you? What made you sign up? My problem was that I was travelling all the time. Literally every week, I was away for two or three days through Europe and the United States. So. When I came back, I wasn't going to be hanging around pubs, clubs. So what was the best way to do it? Employ someone to find <laughs> Get someone, someone else to do it. Recruitment agency, exactly. Okay, so the two of you were signed up to the same dating agency. Uh, obviously, given history, you were made for each other, but yet they didn't spot that. Well, I wouldn't exactly say that, but no. In the main, there was a, 11 years between us, so that could have been a factor. You mean the, 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 the filter that they were using, which may have been a, quite an automatic one, they saw 11 years between the two of you, therefore you weren't even entered into each other's frame. Exactly. Now, I suppose what we took from that interview, we, we realised that it wasn't exactly an interview. We kind of filled out, it was more of a box-ticking exercise, filling out a form, saying what restaurants we liked, things like that. So what we took from that as well what can we do better than that can we okay, actually... no, no, hang on you're jumping forward we you weren't we at this point no. how did you become we how did you no, actually right. meet tell the truth well we met Shame in, the, the devil. in the gables actually in fox rock without <laughs> having to uh, advertise the gables but you know it's a free dinner anyway. yeah sitting there having a glass of wine and we got chatting and it was through the early days when we did start chatting um about this and obviously we were dating then that we discovered that both both of us had been in this agency. Okay, so it was a casual encounter, an yeah. arbitrary encounter that led you to meeting each other and forming a relationship. Exactly. Not a dating agency. No. Because I didn't know at that stage what age he was or anything about him. I just knew he was mm. easy to talk to. I mean, that's serendipity and it's the way everyone would like things to happen mm -hmm. to form a relationship. But of course, sometimes people don't manage to meet people for reasons like Bill, travelling yeah. or maybe shyness or whatever. So they use third parties. So anyway, you decided yeah. to set up your own. Yeah, so we, we discussed it. We did a bit of research. We had a look at what they were doing over in the UK, what, what was happening here in Ireland. And, you know, we said, well, look, this would be a very good idea. And we shelved it for a while. I mean, this was an idea I had had eight to ten years prior to that because I had read an article about an Irish woman, actually, who set up in the UK and had a very successful agency. And at that time, given my background, I had been studying psychotherapy, counselling and coaching for many years. So given that, I decided, well, look, if I can use these skills to do something like this, it would be a perfect, um, you know, addition or it would be a perfect career. So, Bill, you mightn't have been involved in this at all, except except for Lehman Brothers. Explain. Well, uh, Pat, I'm a charter surveyor by profession. I, at that time, I was involved f for the, in the so-called Celtic Tiger years, involved in commercial property investments in Europe and in the United States. However, when the Fed let uh, Lehman's go <laughs> down the toilet, suddenly there was no banking. And I had previously, we had been discussing setting up an agency, but I had had no time, neither did Jennifer. But I had gone to meet agencies both in the UK and in the US who charged anything from 8,000 sterling up to 200,000 US and just to see what they offered in for that kind of money. So now I had time, Jennifer had time, so we said, hey, let's do this. Initially, we thought we could do it on a sort of part-time basis, 
but this was the big shock. It became apparent very quickly you can't do it on a part-time basis. And also that there is a huge demand for this kind of thing. Um, your typical clients, is there such a thing? No, no, not not necessarily. I mean, we have people ranging from late twenties to late seventies, so and from every walk of life, people who are separated, single, separated, divorced, widowed. But then the one thing they have in common is that they're looking for a life partner. They're looking for a relationship. They're not just looking to go dating. They want something no. that will be reasonably permanent. Exactly. We don't get people coming to us looking for one night stands or flings. So therefore anybody that does come to an agency they're more or less guaranteed that the people they're going to meet are very genuine and sincere and there's a very high level of transparency. Mm. Now tell me what is different about what you do? Uh, because I mean there are loads of agencies out there on the internet and uh, dial up agencies and drop into agencies. What's different about what you do? It's the fact that it's personal. We meet every one of our members. We spend anything from one to two hours with them, getting to know them, getting to know all about them. This sounds like a song, but <laughs> it is very much about that. And the more we time we spend with them, the better we are then in a position to introduce them to suitable matches, which is why they're coming to us in the first place. But you place. must have a scoring system uh, or, or a way of designating on paper in a file uh, or on a screen that you know, a certain kind of person uh, will suit another kind of person. I mean, if one likes music and the other doesn't particularly like music, I mean, loads of couples are like that. It doesn't mean that they won't get on. Absolutely. Oh, no. So that's why you spend the time with them. It's not like an online site, which is just algorithms which are going to decide, you know, yeah. who your perfect partner is, which is complete, obvious nonsense. What happens if someone comes in, say it's a man, and he says, um, I'm sick and tired of working. I need a rich woman. Gosh, well, we, no, don't really, we don't really get that. <laughs> not yet, anyway. Um, or vice versa. The, the, you know, the gold digger is more commonly uh, described as the female of the species, but it happens there are loads of lads, too, who could do with someone who's got a fat we income. We don't... The women, the quality of women we attract as members are not that kind of women. They are people who are intelligent, interesting, successful... So they are not gold diggers or never... Mm. Be, the money is irrelevant. And what sort of things are on their minds that, that make it difficult for them to go dating in the common way or go out with pals to uh, pubs or restaurants or to go to dinner parties as singletons? Um, what kind of things do they tell you, the reason they're using an agency? Um, time is one of the factors because um, a lot of them would have good careers, good jobs, and they'd be spending a lot of time working. And therefore, the time they have to socialise, they don't want to be going out there, you know, with this um, Lucky target. Dip. Yes, or also, they're very specific about what they're looking for. So I think by the time you get to sort of late 20s, early 30s, or even people in their older years, they do have an idea of the kind of qualities they're looking for in a partner. So they don't necessarily want to just leave it all to chance. If you're talking about maybe somebody in their 30s, they're maybe looking to get married, have children, start a family. Time is running out, so their body clock is ticking away and they're very aware of that. So they've decided, well, they will come to an agency like this company because they want to start this process. They want to meet somebody who's on the same hymn sheet, somebody who has the same objective and goals as they have. Who wants to have a family start exactly. settling down, as exactly. it were. Exactly, that they have that in mind. So therefore, um, it makes it very much easier if you know the other person mm. is looking for what you are looking for. Now, what about uh, people who are widowed or people who are divorced and there may be children and therefore they don't quite know how the kids feel about dad or mum dating again? Yes, that can happen and we have seen that. But on the other hand, we had a widow and widower 62 and 58 who got married there some few months ago. So there is plenty of hope for those who are widowed or divorced. The only difficulty is when you get to, say, your 40s or 50s, the pubs and club scene is not where you want to be. So that's There may be no venues that you can actually meet in there, a... There aren't any, um, besides a well-known club in Bagger Street. But other than that, <laughs> there, there isn't anywhere you can go. So what do you do? You, you could join a tennis club or whatever. You could go on the net, which is... You lose your privacy and your confidentiality is gone. So what's left? We're there because we're totally private and confidential. We've had members who are TDs, former colleagues of yours actually in RTE, who mm. have been with us because of the privacy and confidentiality. It has never gotten out in five years that any of these people were ever members of Two's company, even though we have introduced them to long-term partners. So what's your success rate? 
depends how you define success. If well, well, give me the different metrics and I'll tell you how I define we success. We have people who are married. We had uh, we had our first baby yeah, recently. Please come to baby. Yeah. Uh, we have people who are living together, people in long term relationships, people doing sleepovers and so on. We <laughs> other thing is uh, I'm introduced to someone and we are friends, but through that I meet one of her friends, she meets one of my. So we've had a lot of this happen. So in terms of success, we have, for instance, quite a number of our members who are now on their third and fourth session with us. They may not have met Mr. Wright or Miss Wright, yeah. but they've enjoyed the experience. And we get an enormous amount of referrals. So you have lots of people coming through your doors. Um, mm. Do you inter- interview the men or the women, Bill, or it, is it, does it matter? I don't think it matters, but it's turned out that I end up interviewing most of the women and Jennifer interviews most of the men. Yeah. And so you two met in this casual way. I mean, you meet all these people coming through the door. Do you ever say to yourself, God, I could have done better than Jennifer now? <laughs> and do you ever say, I could have done better than Bill? Every day, Pat. <laughs> well, I refuse to answer no. on air. <laughs> Don't no. incriminate yourself. Exactly. I know. I mean, when you're, when you're interviewing somebody, you're, you're, you're doing that. You're in a particular frame of mind. You're in a particular mindset. You're sitting there. You're there to do the best you can for the person that you're with. So, uh, you know, I, I, what I'm looking for is how introducible are these people? How easy is it going to be to work with them? Yeah. What qualities have they got? Obviously, there are geographical considerations as well. Obviously. I mean, if people, one's in Donegal and one's in Cork, it's yeah, going to be very it's difficult. It's not viable. I mean, you have to make it practical for people too. I mean, if people join an agency, they come to us with criteria. They know what they're looking for and they will specify now, areas. Do you organise the date? No. no. And the reason, there's a very good reason why we don't do that, Pat. And the reason we don't do that is, I know, I wouldn't like to sit up opposite somebody in a restaurant for the first time. And number one, I don't think I could digest my food because I would be a little bit nervous yeah. and anxious. But so you, also, uh, so it's how formal. do you do it? Like if, if the woman comes and she says, I want to have, I want to meet someone, I want to have a date. Mm. Um, can she organise the date? Does she control the situation or does the guy control the situation as to where they'll meet or what they'll do? No. Will they go to the opera? Will they go to the fish and ship? Actually, we leave it up to them. I mean, as far as we're concerned, they're adults. They know exactly what they want to do. They know when they're free. So we get them to have a chat about it first. We get our what, members to talk. By telephone, first yes. of all. Yes. We, we, yeah. we, what we would and do is... Uh, do you send out the, pictures and all that? Or? No, no pictures, totally private, totally, totally private. confidential. I mean, there's one thing we will never do is compromise anybody's privacy or confidentiality. So they don't That's actually paramount. see the whites of each other's eyes until the date? Exactly. And it's most interesting when we introduce people, particularly someone who would be in the public eye, um, so when they're introduced, it's on a Christian name basis only. We don't give surnames, no Facebooking, no Googling. So then, and then they, they walk into the room and they say, oh my God, and there he is. <laughs> yeah, that's brilliant. No, they, they do get to speak first. <laughs> they speak over the phone so it breaks the ice. So, for example, you know, John rings Cathy and they talk on the phone and they say, well, look, like, would you like to meet up on Friday or Saturday night? Yeah. When would you be free? And, uh, you know, where are you living? Well, look, why don't we meet somewhere midway? Or we could meet in the city centre and go for a casual drink and okay. then see how it goes after and that. And do you get feedback after every date? Uh, and, uh, you know, do you encourage them if things didn't go particularly well the first time? Because first dates can be awkward for everybody. They can do you be. encourage them to go back? or? Well, we would, yeah. We would say to them, look, if there was ease there, if you both got on fairly well and the conversation flowed, Try, try going out a second time. Maybe next time go somewhere different, go for a meal and see how it goes. But feedback is very important for us mm. because it's through the feedback that we can refine it for the next time. What sort of criteria do people lay down in their wish list? Because, I mean, be careful of what you wish for. You might get everything, tick every box, but the person, you know, there's no chemistry. So what kind of things do people lay down? Is it about security? Is it about age? Is it about... I don't know. Well, age, marital status. So if somebody's single, they may want to meet somebody else who's single. Or equally, somebody who's widowed may say, well, I would actually like somebody else who's widowed and who has a grown-up family because I can relate more to somebody like that. So they give us their specific criteria. And sometimes it, that can go from the sublime to the ridiculous. So like. sometimes you can get somebody who says, well, I want somebody who plays off a handicap of eight, <laughs> or, you know, <laughs> golf, because I play golf four yeah, times a week. And I don't be looking for balls all the time exactly. if you pardon the phrase exactly <laughs> yeah. or you might you know you might get somebody who says well, look you know this is something I'm hugely interested in I'm passionate about so I ideally would love somebody who's got the same interest yeah. and uh, we take now, that into account this business um, globally is worth billions and billions of dollars um, how expensive is it for people to use your service 
Well, it very, very much depends on what they're looking for. And we, we have a starting fee of around five or 600 euro. But if someone comes to me and said to me, well, I want actually hands-on from you. I want a little bit more um, coaching or I want you, I want to see photographs or I want um, to set out very, very, very tight and specific criteria. It means you have to put, have more input into it. Absolutely. We have to filter things to the nth degree or, you know, we have to say to them, well, look, I'm going to speak to you on the phone. I'm going to do a lot more talking to you. I'm going to give you um, examples of people and you can make a choice. So people come to me and they'll tell me what they want and I can tailor make that to suit them because everybody has their own specific ideas of what they're Do you ever get for. people coming back in, Bill, saying, that so-and-so you fixed me up with last night, she's the greatest wagon I've ever come across, blah, 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 or the greatest bastard I've ever come across in the case of a man? Yeah, we get uh, you mostly get that from guys who think they're God's gift anyway. <laughs> and um, these are the guys I hate, actually. <laughs> but uh, yes, it can happen. And this is the thing you were talking about. We've put people together that we ticked all the boxes and it yeah. didn't work. The chemistry, as you mentioned earlier, that's what it's about. And you can't... I wish I had a, an aerosol can that I could spray over them and yeah. like be like the Cinzano Bianco out of years ago, but that's not the way it works, regretfully. Bill Phelan and Jennifer Haskins, who set up twoscompany.com, one of Ireland's largest introduction services. Thank you very much. Uh, coming up next...